Forget everything you know about frequent flyer programs. In an effort to win your business, the credit card companies have teamed up with the airline companies to sell you the following myth. Sign up for this credit card, spend money on it to accumulate points, then use these points to book flights to anywhere in the world. But what these companies fail to mention is that, before you can accumulate enough points to actually redeem a flight, you need to spend a lot of money. Booking travel with frequent flyer points can be extremely complicated if you don't know what you're doing. So even though the credit card companies are supposedly giving away all this free airfare, these programs are actually making them enormous profits since most people don't spend enough money to earn the points they need to travel, most people don't redeem their points since the process of doing so is so confusing, and finally, the minority of people who do redeem their points are tricked into wasting them on low value flights and other redemptions. So in the end, the credit card companies win more customers from whom they can collect billions of dollars in fees and interest while sacrificing very little in terms of airfare savings to the consumer. So who are the travel hackers? Travel hackers are people who take maximum advantage of the loopholes that arise from these credit card airline partnerships. Through different web blogs and forums, they exchange knowledge on the best promotions and strategies for racking up points for free and cheap. With the right systems in place, a travel hacker can rack up tens of thousands of dollars in airfare every year with very little time and money invested. The core tactics that travel hackers use to accumulate points is churning credit cards and manufacturing spending. We'll cover these tactics in detail later in the course, but for now, I'll give you a sneak peek of the process by describing my first travel hacking experience booking round trip airfare from the east coast of the US to Brazil for only $60. Back in the summer of 2012, I became extremely interested in travel hacking when my friend Eric told me how he flew first class from New York to Chile to Argentina to Brazil and back to New York for just $120. I was actually planning a trip to Brazil that fall and was not looking forward to spending $800 on a one-way ticket, so I was really eager to get into the travel hacking game myself. But I didn't quite understand the process, so I just trusted Eric's judgment and did exactly what he instructed me to do. First, I applied for several credit cards at once. One of these cards was the Chase United Frontier card which at the time offered a bonus of 40,000 points to anyone who simply signed up for the card and purchased at least one item with it. So once I received the card, I purchased a pack of Tic Tacs at my local gas station, paid the $1.8 balance online, banked my 40,000 points, then tossed the card in a drawer somewhere in my house, never to see it again. I then used 30,000 of those 40,000 points to book my flight from Newark to Sao Paulo for $5. At the time I applied for the United card, I also applied for the Chase Sapphire card, which was offering a 40,000 point bonus if I spent $3,000 in three months. Now, I live a pretty frugal lifestyle, so typically I would have a hard time putting that much money on a credit card in such a short period of time. But this wasn't an issue, since I planned on meeting this bonus through manufactured spending. We go over manufactured spending and all its associated hacks in detail in this course, but just to give you a taste, I want to tell you about how I use the Amazon Payments hack to reach my spending limit without spending a dime of my own money. First, I use my Chase Sapphire credit card to send $1,000 to Eric on Amazon Payments. Eric used his card to send $1,000 to his business partner, AJ. Then AJ in turn used his credit card to send me $1,000. I then deposited the money into my bank account and promptly pay my $1,000 credit card bill with the money. So nobody gained or lost a single cent, but after repeating the process two more times in less than three months, I was able to manufacture $3,000 in spending on my card, and then bank the 40,000 point bonus. Once again, I used 30,000 of those points to book my return flight from Brazil to the US, paying just $55 in taxes and fees. So, Let's review the total cost of my Brazil trip. $60 in total taxes and government fees, plus $1.8 in Tic Tac fees, makes a grand total of $61.08. Now, had I purchased these two one-way tickets normally, 
this trip easily could have cost me as much as $2,000. After this experience, I was hooked. Since Eric introduced me to travel hacking six months ago, I've turned a dozen credit cards and acquired over 200,000 frequent flyer points. Now you may be wondering a few things. Is this legal? Yes. Nothing I did here was fraudulent or against the law. The worst thing that can happen to me is that the credit card companies catch on to my antics and cancel my accounts. But because they profit so much on the 99.99% of consumers who are not hacking the system, they're not really concerned about what I'm up to. Will this hurt my credit score? Whenever I tell people how many credit cards I have, they look at me with such pity and concern. But that's because they simply do not understand how credit works. Since I started travel hacking six months ago, my credit score has actually gone up by 50 points. And in the next section of this course, we explain exactly why that is. Is this moral? Well, I'll leave it up to you to decide. But I personally have no qualms against gaming an industry whose business model is based around burying irresponsible consumers in debt and collecting interest on them. Does this take a lot of time? I admit, there was a bit of a learning curve at the beginning of this process as I tried to figure out and set up all these hacks. But now that I got the system down, everything is more or less on autopilot. When I tell people how I fly around the world for free, they get excited and they want to learn more. But the process can be overwhelming at the beginning if you do not have someone to guide you the way Eric guided me. That's why we teamed up to create this course, so that you too can get in the game as quickly as possible. Now that I'm officially a travel hacker, the world has opened up to me. It really changes your perspective when you know you can hop over to a different hemisphere for the price of a box of Tic Tacs. If you're like me and like being the system and winning at life, then you're going to love this course. Just make sure you pay close attention and ask questions if you're confused about anything. Oh yeah, and one more thing. You might want to buy yourself a globe.